usually um, a lot of people sort of are a little confused when they ask about pronouns initially when they first see me. To find out what people's pronouns are is a simple question of politely just saying, may I ask what your pronouns are? Preferred pronoun is she and her. My preferred pronouns are she and her. That's what they are. I don't, I don't stray away from it. I know that's my alignment. Um, but I respect anybody that wants to go through a spectrum of he or she, or, you know, knowing that that's what their binary is. You know when there's a conscious or unconscious sort of um, approach to someone saying, saying the wrong, misgendering you? I don't get misgendered very often in face-to-face. -face. Um, on the phone, I would get misgendered quite a lot. Because they don't see you, they'll say mate or sir or whatever need be, and you go, no, and I correct them rather quickly and say, no, it's ma'am, when it's conscious, it is yeah, it's rather debilitating and it sort of upsets you. You go home, you go, OK, I'll accept that, but you go home rather upset in the end. I'm not a man. <gasps> in my mind, and that's where it is, in my mind, I'm not male. I present myself as female. I know myself as female. My brain is female. You know, to get that pronoun right, how would you like to be misgendered? We just want to get out in the world like everybody else. Because that identity is you. You make a lot of effort into what you do and who you are. You've grown up knowing that your head, your heart, and your sex aligns. <laughs> but for someone like myself, it, it hasn't. And society tells us that it is wrong. People just love making their opinions very quickly and judge very quickly. And, it, and it's their problem, not mine. I feel like there was a long time where I was pleasing others. And it's time that I pleased myself, you know? Gendered language is something that, for my experience, is being very binary actually, and saying male, female, that's about it. The, the construct of gender identity really has only appeared in the last, say, 10 years. So we're quite far behind in terms of trying to explain that and get it across. Having that right language is very important, um, not just for not just for the cis community, but also the trans community as well. Your first interaction with someone is physical. And in your head, you go, man, woman. I think it's, I don't even think you realise you do it. It takes a bit of getting used to. And a lot of people I've noticed who have, um, who are working with transgender people or who are living with them, they go along the journey with us. I think what it comes down to is having that understanding and having that education. The world is binary and there's a high percentage of alignment and that's okay but there is a variance and that's not what's talked about. In the end I'm a person just like everybody else and I just want to do my job. I don't want to have to justify it anymore. I've spent a lifetime justifying it in my head. It's not like I've had a choice in becoming transgender, there's no choice in this. I just want to live it, it's just, you know, and I just want to be respected for living it. I remember being very young and knowing that I was female. I just, I knew it. I'm not totally uncomfortable with my body. It's more the fact that I felt like I was never able to express it. For me, I find it as an affirmation. That, go, that develops over years and develops over time. I think it goes straight to, have you had removal or adding of sex organs? That's all they think and that's all they see. My gender to me is what is here and what is here. It's a spiritual journey, it's an emotional journey, it's a, you know, there's a lot. It just doesn't mean that, you know, something gets chopped off or something gets added. Everyone has a different journey though. Everybody has a different journey. Not one is the same. It's a massive self journey as well as a journey with other people around you. For me, my journey was more about the internal conflict I had with dealing with it. There was a very dark time for about 18 months um, where I, I, couldn't, I couldn't get out of bed, I couldn't, you know, it consumed me emotionally and I was just so tired of it. When everyone sees us, they just see that and they just, they, first impressions is just go, oh, mental health. That's not even 5% of what we go through. You know, trans people do have this shame um, because it's such a hidden thing. Okay, so transgender means um, they're transitioning their gender from one to the other. Non-binary is when they don't have any recognition of gender as such. So they, they either genderqueer or they don't recognise themselves as male nor female. 
And then a cisgender, I actually don't like this word. And it, it's really interesting because I, I think it's a word that the trans community created to align and justify who we are, but we don't need to. Because at the end of the day, regardless if you've had a sex change or not, I believe you're still always gonna be a trans person. But a lot of transgender people, there is no end for this transition or affirmation. I still smile when it's, uh, when it's unconsciously, still, you know, 15 years on. You know, there was a young lad who came into the hotel and was like, good morning, ma'am. And I'm like, you think I'm old? <laughs> Um, but it still, it, it warms my heart and I still, I think for the rest of my life I'll have that euphoric, slight euphoric smile when it is acknowledged, when you, when you cross paths with people um, that don't know. For me, my personal journey, I have two GPs. I have a GP, what I refer to as my coughs, colds and sore holes. The other one, I've got my gender doctor. When I transitioned, I've got a family doctor who's known me since I was 15. And it was really lovely because he said, I will do what I need to do to get you over the line. I'm just not experienced in this. And I'm okay with that. My doctor who looks after me for my general conditions um, took a while to get onto this. But we've had a good rapport after a, a, some time and I think that's rather important for a lot of people. I had an incident where I was in an emergency room and the doctor came in to examine me and they asked the standard questions, do you have any medication? So I explained that, you know, I'm on this, this, which are hormone replacement medications. And he um, said, you're too young to be on hormone replacement. So I had to disclose that I was trans because he clearly couldn't see it. And I could see in his face, because you know when it makes someone uncomfortable. He walked out and then literally three minutes later someone else walked in and it was like it never had happened. And it's, that is quite dehumanising. Just because your beliefs aren't the same as mine doesn't mean that they're wrong. It's not just on the individual but it's on the community as well. Look, I think there's a lot of things the health system can do to improve our existence, so to speak. If someone's coming to you with a, with a gender variance, respect it. I think the word respect is, you know, really important. To be recognised, to have right proper care and everything else that goes with it. Having a community of people that, that understand it um, is really important. That's really important. I think we've got a long way to go still. And I think what happens is there's good doctors that come in our lifetimes, a random trans person they've seen has come in and they're focused on that's where they want to go and work with trans people, which I think is wonderful. I transitioned around about approximately three years ago and um, it's been a great life ever since.